Hi everybody, welcome to the Catapult webcast, SolidWorks Sheet Metal Beyond the Basics. My name is Judy Marlowe, I'm an application engineer uh, for CATI in our St. Louis, Missouri office. Over the next uh, 60 to 90 minutes, we're going to go ahead and go through some advanced sheet metal techniques. We're going to investigate the Convert to Sheet Metal tool, where you can make take solid work part files and imported parts and then transform them into sheet metal parts with sheet metal properties. We're also going to go through some multi-body sheet metal parts. What multi-body what sheet metal multi-body parts are is that within a single SolidWorks sheet metal part file, you can create multiple bodies. Each part can have their own individual sheet metal properties and their own flat patterns. We're also going to explore some different table formats that are included within SolidWorks. What they do and also how we can use those tables to create our own custom tables. And then the last topic we'll be talking about is forming tools and how you can use existing forming tools supplied by SOLIDWORKS and even create your own. Once we're done with that, I'll leave it open to some questions and comments. So let's go ahead and get started. A little bit of background about myself. Um, I've worked at CATI for about a year and a half. I do training in our St. Louis office. Uh, before that, I worked as a designer at two St. Louis companies using SOLIDWORKS for about eight and a half years. Um, I've worked on, before that, I've worked on many other CAD packages that include AutoCAD or Pro Engineer, um, Inventor, and Solid Edge. There's two companies I worked for within the St. Louis uh, area uh, using SOLIDWORKS, and one of them was Star uh, Manufacturing. I worked on the Lang brand of uh, cooking equipment. These are mainly back kitchen um, products from restaurants, etc. I also worked for a company called True Fitness. I worked on uh, the PS2 treadmill and also worked on the True Strider. So the convert to sheet metal command. What it does is this command combines operations of shell, rip, and insert bends. The rip tool breaks along a solid corner and makes it suitable uh, for bending. Okay, And then the recognized bend method takes existing solid and converts it into the sheet metal part. What we're going to do is take a imported IGES file and we're going to apply the rip command, the recognize bend command, and then we'll even go ahead and, and weld corners. When we rip and insert bends, it's going to be three easy steps. First, we're going to go ahead and take and open up an IGES file, and we will not run and import diagnostics on it. Then we'll use the rip command, and that will create our uh, break in the part. And then the insert bend command will go ahead and add in the bends to create our flat pattern. And once that's done and you've got sheet metal properties associated with it, you can add additional sheet metal flanges, you can add cuts, um, and pretty much add any kind of features that you want. So what I'm going to do to begin is I'm going to go ahead and open up our I just file. Here's our I just file and hit open. Uh, we're going to hit no to import diagnostics. I have our sheet metal command manager open. We notice we have an imported part. I'm going to go ahead and hit rip. I'm going to set the gap. Uh, one thing I needed to do, I notice I'm in inches. Before that, I'm going to go ahead and make sure our units are millimeters. Now let me go back into our rip command. There we go, 0.1 millimeter. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rip this corner here. And it doesn't matter whether you do the inside or outside corners. It's going to go ahead and rip your corners for you. 
to the gaps that you specified. Now our insert bends, once we have our rips in place, it's going to ask us for our bends. I'm going to go ahead and leave our bend radius to be 1.5 millimeters. And then it's also going to ask us for our fixed face. So in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do select other so I can pick the bottom face. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and leave our auto relief, which is going to be a tear. I'm going to go ahead and leave that, which is the um, relief that's going to be applied to each of these two corners. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Notice when we do that, um, notice now we have a sheet metal property associated with our part. We also have our flattened bends and process bends, and now we also have our flat pattern. So we had our two ripped corners, and it applied a bend on these three areas right in here. Now the convert to sheet metal method is going to take a solid part, and it's going to do it all in one step. So we're going to take a solid part that you see, we're going to um, use the convert to sheet metal. We're going to pick the bends. It will automatically pick the gaps for us. And once again, we will have a solid uh, a sheet metal part. And again, it will have its own flat pattern. And you can also then add additional features to your part file. So let's go ahead and open up A part file. It's just a solid boss. It's again, I'm going to make sure we're in millimeters, which we are. Our convert to sheet metal is the second icon in the sheet metal command manager. So when I pick that, we have our choice of picking a gauge table. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and pick a table. And for this application, I'm going to use a, just a sample table steel. And I'm going to go ahead and pick, let's pick 18 gauge. So again, it's going to ask us for a fixed face. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select other to select the bottom face. Okay. If I zoom in real quick, I can see that now that I've, I've picked a fixed face, note that my preview is starting to show the thickness here of the 18 gauge. So our sheet metal's already started. Um, let's see what else do we want to pick. We want our bend radius. I'm going to go ahead and select a 1.905 bend radius. And I'm going to pick the bent edges. If you want all of them, you can collect all. But for this application here, I'm just going to go ahead and pick, um, let's see, I'm going to pick four edges. I'm going to pick this one over here. I want that to be a bent edge. Notice my preview is now showing that that is going to be a flange. I'm going to pick this edge right here. Notice now that we've got material added to that. I'm going to add this here. So now we have a back. Notice once I hit that, it's noticing that this is a uh, edge here that's going to need to be ripped. So notice the smart selection adds the ripped for you. And I'm going to click one more edge here, this one right here, and notice that once I hit that to be my bent edge, it also gave another gap here and another gap here. Those are called smart selections. So you can see the preview then. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And you can see wherever I collected those four bends, it shows the bends, and then where I didn't, it automatically selected the uh, the ripped and you can see it now is complete with our flat pattern as well pretty simple when you convert sheet metal is complete what you can also do is you can add welded corners so in the, under the corners icon here in the command manager, 
there's an option called welded corners. So let's go ahead and open up a file. This is the I just file we did earlier. I just added a few flanges onto it. Um, and what we can do is we can add a welded corner in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead to the corners icon and hit welded corner. What it's going to do first is it's going to ask us for a side or a face. And so here I'm going to go ahead and click on that one face. Notice the preview is going to go ahead and show you all of the where all the weld is going to be shown. Okay. Um, but what we also have a choice is to click on a vertex or an edge to, as a stopping point. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to pick this edge right here and you'll notice that that's where I want my weld to stop. I only want that corner and up the side. You can see the preview. Okay. You can also add texture if you would like and you could also add in uh, which is texture just to the the bead for display purposes and i'll show you as soon as i click ok and then weld symbol that will add, add a weld symbol for the created weld so i can hit ok so you can see that that texture just shows it in your model um, as a texture and notice that the welded corner is now a feature within your feature tree we can go ahead and do the other side as well. It's again in the corner. I can click on that. Tell it where I would like it to stop. I'll leave add texture off of this one. And you can see that that one now does not have texture. So once again, it's just a visual for you. And then you also have just a weld note. Okay. Multi-body sheet metal parts. Um, this design, this type of design allows you to create multi sheet metal bodies within the same part file. And they can potentially be different materials. You can see here where I have a cover. And for this one, um, it's a stainless material. And then, uh, actually it's not, it's a three, 303, 303. We also have a front cover. This one here I have is a stainless steel. And then the rear cover, once again, is, is a 303, and that's aluminum. So you can have three different parts. Notice that it is still one part file, and now it's created a cut list, which is like a bill of material for the three individual pieces. Once we have our solid bodies created, what we can also do then is we can have one flat pattern for each cut list body. Okay, They'll have their own DXFs associated with it. Then we can also add a cut list table and add it to a drawing as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've already got the cover here for us. Okay, we have, remember, we have one part file. It has sheet metal um, properties to it, and we have one cut list item here open that up we have one cover with one mitered flan feature what i'm going to do is on this front face i'm going to go ahead and add the front cover so i'm going to go ahead and create a sketch and i'm going to go to my sheet metal I'm just going to create a base flange. For this application, um, since we want it to be a multi-body part, the key is unchecking this merge results. Once we click that merge results, notice that now my gauge table is available so that I can go ahead and pick a different gauge table. So for this sample here, I'm going to go ahead and hit my, um, I'm going to use um, aluminum. I'm going to go ahead and use a 12 gauge. 
And I also want to reverse my direction so we can see here the parts going inside. I'm going to go ahead and hit reverse direction. And then I can go ahead and hit OK. Notice now you can see my cut list is two. I'm going to go ahead and update my cut list. And you can see now we've got one cover with one body, solid body, and we have another separate solid body. I'm going to go ahead and rename this cut list to be cover front. Oh, let me take off my caps. There we go. So we have a cover and we have a cover front. I can go ahead and I can uh, break these corners off. I'm just going to make them 7 mill millimeter break. I don't want the face. I wanted the edge. There we go. Okay, so now I have a front cover with two body, two multi-body parts, two cut list. So we can also do is we can go on the back side and we can create our rear cover. Once again, I'm going to create a sketch, make a rectangle. I'm going to now create another base flange. I can zoom in here. Notice that I also want to take off my rear merge results so that it's a separate party. We're going to reverse my direction. I can also pick another aluminum table. Um, just as I did the front cover, I'm going to go ahead and make this a 12 gauge aluminum piece. And I'm going to go back to and break these corners. There we go. So now I'm going to go back and we can see we have three cut list items. And I'm going to go ahead and change this cut list here to now read cover rear. Okay. Now what we can do is we can apply um, different material. Um, if we apply the material here, then it's going to apply to all of the parts, but we want to have the front uh, cover and the rear cover um, to be, let's see, aluminum, and then we want stainless to have the mitered flange. So for this cover body here, I'm going to right mouse click, add material. So for our cover, I'm going to go ahead and make this, um, let's see, how about an AISI 347 stainless? Go ahead and add that. Okay, so now you can see that's applied to that feature, uh, or I should say that cut list part. I'm going to go ahead and right mouse click on that material. Let me add it, that one. I'm going to go over to our aluminum. Um, these are all materials that are within SolidWorks. You can also add in your own custom materials. There's also more materials you can access through SolidWorks Material Web Portal by clicking here, and that will bring you into their web portal for more materials. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and do a, uh, let's see, how about a 303 H14? That sounds good. I'm going to apply. Need to close. Um, could have picked this at the same time or once again go back into it if you wanted a third material. I'm going to go ahead and just make it the same. So now you can have three different features, cutlass features within one part file with their own material. When you want to add um, features to this, what we can do is we can go in and we can go ahead and create a hole wizard. I'm going to go ahead and take this front cover here and I think I'm going to add, uh, make that transparent. Okay, you can see. What I'm going to do is add a hole wizard. I'm going to select this a six millimeter through all hole. 
and my position. I'm going to go ahead and click on this front face here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to the front view. I'm just going to place these in here temporarily just for this application. Um, you can see that when I put them in, they go all the way through. All right. One of the things that we can pick is in our features. There we go. Is without clicking on the feature scope, it's going to go through all of the features themselves. For this instance, if we did not want it to go through the uh, the back feature, or I should say the back piece, we can go ahead and delete that. We can just select bodies versus all bodies, and then notice that we've got our parts. Um, this very first part here, the front cover. If I click on that, you can see that the holes are through that one. And the other body scope was to go through the cover, so it went through both of those flanges, but because we excluded this third piece, because we didn't want the holes to go through there. Okay, So just be aware of the scope body is now becomes valuable What we can also do is we can create a, um, a cut list and make a drawing for our, our assembly here. It's not an assembly for our multi-body part. So what we can do is I can go up into our, I started one on up here with a, an exploded view. What we can do is we can go in, we can go to annotations. We can create a table, just like a bill of material, but it's called a weldment cut list. We can select a drawing view. I'm going to leave it as a default cut list. Hit OK. And now you'll see that we can have our cut list with the bounding box areas, um, our descriptions, how many there are, etc., and each one with their material callout. Okay, just like regular bill of materials. Um, we can modify how we want our table. We can also create our own table so it has all the spe specifications that we wanted within our sheet metal part. One thing I didn't show earlier was, let me go back to that, um, let me go back to my sketch over here. When we want to create our um, flat patterns, our DXFs, okay, it's pretty simple. We do File, Save As. When we click on this, we go down to our DXF. And notice what it does is once you say DF, DXF, automatically goes into a file name. I'm going to click OK or Save. Once we go into our DXF DWG output, the command manager asks you, what do you want to export? So for this instance, we want to go ahead and pick sheet metal. It's going to ask you which sheet metal pattern do we want to export? Well, I want all three of them, okay? Which would be the flat pattern. Uh, I think this is one here, two here, and the rear cover is three. I want to show bend lines. You can export just geometry or hidden lines. You can pick whatever information that you want exported. You also have an exported option for a single file, which would mean a DXF with multiple sheets, or whether you want three separate files. So that's another option. So if I click OK, I'm going to leave the single file just for this. It's going to go through. It's editing the part. It doesn't take too terribly long here as it's going through everything. And now you can see it comes up with our cleanup window. So for our DXF window, I'm going to open this up just a little larger for you. So now you'll see that you have your first flat pattern one. I can click the arrow. Here is our flat pattern two. 
You can also do a clean up window and then we also have our flat pattern three. You can remove entities. Um, you can also save or not. Okay, you want to do separate files. You can hit OK. Give it just a minute here. It'll work on it. And once again, we've got sheet metal one, two, three. So that was, seems to be a better option that you don't have to do a whole lot of cleanup. And if we hit save, then what we have is we'll have saved off three separate DXF, DXF files. So when we work with sheet metal parts, um, requires a few extra details like gauges and sheet metal parameters and bend allowances and even reliefs. So whether you're an old school using notes that you have carried out through your career where you have calculations, um, this one I, I've had many, but I, this one I borrowed from a, a coworker of mine, or whether or not you have apps on your, on your um, smartphone where you want to go in and um, have some of the information right there at your hands. Um, there's also some sheet metal websites that are that are that I've used before that have been pretty good. There is a uh, sheetmetalguy.com, and there's also a sheetmetal.me where a lot of calculations can be worked out. Um, they give you a lot of different calculations that you can just plug in um, your numbers and it'll figure it out for you. Here are some of the sample tables that are provided by the SOLIDWORKS application. Um, these are located in your install directory under language, which is L-A-N-G, and then under the language of your choice, uh, mine is English, and then there's sheet metal gauge tables. Um, these are samples only, okay? So for sheet metal designers who maybe use common materials or gauges, then the sample tables provide usually are sufficient and usually yield pretty acceptable results. Okay. There's also a, a large group of templates and other tables for users to customize. So the sample tables you can use if you use very common materials. Um, sometimes you need to create your own table, which we'll do here in just a few minutes. Uh, some sheet metal projects might need bigger or more complete or accurate tables. Um, <clears throat> and here's a list of um, Excel files that are available for you. It's re recommended that if you want to use one of these, that you go ahead and copy them, and that's a really good starting point for your data. That way, when you're creating your, your own table, the formatting is preserved so that it'll function properly. So when you understanding bend allowance and bend deductions is a part, um, is really the, the crucial first step to understanding how sheet metal parts are fabricated. When sheet metal parts are put through the bending process, the materials deformed and stretch. So this will add a small amount of length to your part. So in this case, you'd use a bend this would be bend allowance, okay, as you can see in the, in the slide. Um, likewise, when you're trying to develop a flat pattern, you might have to make a bend deduction from your desired part size to get the correct flat, and that would be the bend deduction, okay? So if you want to do the math, here is how you can calculate your, your bend deductions or go through one of the websites and, and plug them all in or just do it by hand. Here's an example of the bend allowance calculations and how those are calculated. But 
do you really want to do all these calculations? Yeah, there's websites and apps to help you, but why not just use SolidWorks, let it do it for you with these table templates. So here's two types of tables um, in this slide. Here's an append allowance sample table in millimeters. Um, and again, these millimeters come in, these tables come in millimeters or in inches. And then we also have Ben deduction sample table. There are two types of sheet metal gauge tables. One is simple, and then there's one that's a gauge slash bend combination. The bend tables also come in two different formats. One is a text file. That one will have a BT1 extension. And then um, another is an embedded Excel spreadsheet. And then you also have K factor tables. Back in 2009, gauge tables were expanded to incorporate a list of standard stocked materials by gauges, uh, a list of radius bend tool size for each gauge, and then even a custom uh, K factor table for each gauge tool and bend angle. Whenever you use gauge tables, they are copied into your part file when it's first selected for use with the part. It's not referenced. This way, when you share your file with someone, that copy will go with it. So no one has, you don't have to externally um, send a gauge table with it, okay? There isn't a way that you can view or extract the table after the part, after it's copied into the part. Now, one of the, the painful side effects of this is that um, when the table's being copied rather than referenced, then when you choose to update the table in some way, it's not going to trickle down um, to all of your part files. Um, what it'll be is you um, need to recopy it into the part. You just can't update it. You would actually need to edit the sheet metal feature and either uncheck the use gauge table or choose a different one and pick OK. So here, here's an um, example of the two sheet metal gauges. One is simple, where you have your gauge. Um, and then you also have the combined gauge table bend. Um, either sheet metal gauge table can assign process, gauge thickness, allowable bend radius, and even K factors. Both examples are created in Excel spreadsheets. Now a simple gauge is just based on sheet metal gauge alone. But when you have a combination of the gauge and bend table, you use this table to specify both thickness and bend values in a single table. There's a few uh, caveats here. You must list thickness and radial, um, radii values in ascending order. Otherwise, it, it will not work correctly. I told you earlier that we have two different kinds of formats for our bend table. This is a sample of a text file. Um, the text file is simply um, simply just um, a text file that you can open up in Note. Um, and then you also have the embedded Excel spreadsheet that you just open up into Excel. I know I've used, uh, we used to use K factor sample tables to create ours. K factor is the ratio that represents the location of the neutral sheet with respect to the thickness of the sheet metal part. So a lot of times people will ask, so where do I get my K factor for my table that matches, you know, my shop? Well, it takes just a little bit of experimenting if you don't already have the numbers. What you'd want to do is take a sample measure the overall length and thickness, um, your bend die radius, and then bend it. Then measure the overall lengths and plug in the values into the attached spreadsheet. Then the spreadsheet will help you reverse calculate too for your gauge table. Okay. Um, there are other websites that can calculate it for you. Um, like I said before, I use that sheet metal guy.
one of the most common errors that people that I've seen is attempting to, if uh, customers try to use a bend deduction or a bend allowance table the same as a K factor. The thing is, if you want to use K factors, they are critically different. The bend deduction and the bend allowance table uses a radius only, while K factor tables are going to use the radius and thickness. So all tables are not handled the same way, so they're really not interchangeable. So just be aware of that. Now there's a rule of thumb, different K factors are going to depend on your company's bending operations. Okay? One of the things that I also want to cautious you when you well caution you when you're setting up your your tables, um, and I speak from experience on this, is that we had set up our tables for our um, production line uh, when I worked at um, Star Manufacturing. Uh, we had our model shop that was up here in St. Louis. We had our plant that was down in Tennessee. Not necessarily did we have, when we found out that the um, we did not have the same tooling. So if you need to, you know, be aware of that. Maybe set up a table uh, for your production and maybe set up another one for your model shop because uh, when we set it up, we didn't always get the same thing depending on the, you know, where it was created, where it was made. So when you customize your own table, don't be afraid to customize. A few guidelines we're going to follow, and then we'll go ahead and I'll show you how we'll make one. The, the gauge table, they should progress in ascending order of thicknesses. This is important. Um, radius values in columns should be aligned, even if the value is not practical. What I mean by that is if your radius value, um, let's say the first column of the first gauge is a bend radius of 0.1 millimeter, then every gauge selection below that should also have a one millimeter at the top of the first column. Okay, The object is not to leave anything blank all the data columns should be full and populated. And also, it's very important that you use semicolons as a delimiter in between the values. Now, it's best to use these, all of these rules, okay? Um, if you don't, chances are it may or may not work. But if you do follow these guidelines, it's guaranteed that your table will work, okay? So let's go ahead and customize a table. Let me go back. So here, if we go into our program files, um, I might have one or two extra levels than you would have. But if we go into program files under SolidWorks, under the language folder, I pick English, you'll see that you have sheet metal gauge tables and you also have sheet metal bend tables. If we click on that, you can see we've got our bend allowances. Okay, so what I did was I took this sample table over here, and this is what it looks like, and I made my own custom table. So what I did was I copied it and I deleted what I didn't want, okay? And so these were the gauges that we had used. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish off this table here with the rest of the information. Once again, just like an Excel spreadsheet, what you can do is you can go ahead and, um, you know, delete rows, delete columns, but it's best to use this. It's already set up for you and just add in your information, okay? So I'm going to add in some of uh, my information. Once again, using the semicolon is important to separate. Okay, semicolon. 
So what I've done is I have given my sheet metal gauge, I've given available bend radiuses, and then what I can do is I can just go ahead and I renamed it my custom table, and I can just go ahead and hit OK and save this file off. It's just that easy. So take one of your custom file, one of these tables, whether it's a sheet metal bend table, allowance, deduction, or whatever, go ahead through, pick out the table that best fits um, your company, and then just go ahead and um, copy it and just add in your information. Okay. Now, even though you use a sheet metal a gauge table or whether you're using any kind of table, you can also edit any feature and override your bend radius or your bend allowances, bend deductions, etc. And you can even, you know, change out your tables. So you can see here, you just right mouse click on sheet metal, edit the feature. And you'll see here, you can change your gauge tables. You can also overwrite your bend allowances, etc. cetera. Okay. Um, the bend allowance area of your command manager will show you can change your bend allowances to be K, K factor, bend table, um, or I should say bend allowance, bend deduction, and uh, bend calculations as well. All right, so forming features. So we use forming tools um, and a design library to create form features. Whether or not you use embosses or whether you use louvers or lances or even ribs, um, these forming tools are gonna act like dies. They will bend, stretch, or deform your sheet metal. The face that you apply the forming tool corresponds to the topping the stopping surface of the tool itself. By default, the tool is going to travel inwards towards the face. And if you simply press the tab key, that will do the push or pulling um, through the face. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you. Um, I've created a louver, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an existing louver. Okay. If we see in our design tools, I'm gonna to go up here in our task pane, and we have a design library, and we have a folder called Forming Tools. These are within SolidWorks. So for many applications, I've taken, we had a louver, and what I'll do is I'll take an existing file and name it something else and create your own from existing one, or just go ahead and create them yourself. Here, I'm going to go ahead and take this existing one. I'm going to go ahead and edit this sketch because I'm going to create my louver to actually be a little bit wider, but a little bit shorter. So I'm going to go ahead and make, make this 40 uh, by 8. Rebuild. Now I have a little bit of a shorter, a little bit of a little more stout. When we're creating our forming tools, okay, what we do is we will do insert sheet metal and right down here near the bottom we've got forming tool. It's going to give us two different tabs. First of all, the type. It's going to ask us for a stopping face. This is going to be the stopping face. Once again, it's the face that I'm going to pick that I want the tool to stop at. It also asks you if you want to remove any faces, and in this case I do. I want this face here to be removed from my louver so that it's open. As soon as you click OK, it will color code your, your um, part file here. Notice we're still, we have a solid part. What we need to also do is then go ahead and click on File, Save As, and instead of a part file, 
we have a forming tool. A forming to tool is an SLD FTP. Uh, once you click on that, it's going to automatically default, default to your design library. So if you want to, you can go ahead and put it in with the forming tools or you can keep it separate. You can also make your own folder. And I usually do suggest making your own folder of your forming tools. That way, whenever you upgrade uh, SolidWorks, you won't lose those tools and the design la library won't be covered over. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to leave it in this folder here and hit save. All right. Then what we can do is I'm going to go ahead and open up a cover. I'm going to go ahead and open up our forming tools. Let's see if I can look for my louvers. Under the forming tools, under louvers, here's our long louver that we just created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull that in by just doing a drop and drag. So I'm going to go over here. Notice that I'm holding my left mouse cursor, uh, my left mouse button, and I can hit my tab key, and you can see the push or pull that I was talking about earlier. And you can go ahead and you can place your forming tool and hit OK, and you'll see then that um, what that does is that it absorbs as a feature into your part. Um, you can take that, you can um, modify it by adding in dimensions, and notice we have a forming tool um, icon here, and you can pattern them. You can add as many as you'd like. I want to do a linear pattern, I can do so. I'll go ahead and do a pattern. I'm going to go ahead and pick our feature. Let me go ahead here to our forming tool. And let's go ahead and add a few door dimensions. Go 30 and you can hit OK. Okay. So that's pretty simple how to make your own forming tool. All right, there are a few things in 2014 that has changed in sheet metal. Um, SolidWorks stands out when it comes to new features and tools with each new revision of software, and 2014 is no exception. So what SolidWorks does is they sort through customer enhancement requests for future revisions, and there's an entire presentation of everything new with the SolidWorks 2014 release. I'm just going to show you a few that I thought were exciting um, features that were added to the sheet metal package. Adding sheet metal gussets has now become very easy. Um, it's just a, um, I would say, not even a two-step process here. We can create, um, add sheet metal gussets either rounded or flat. You can add uh, depth to your profiles, etc. Let me go ahead here and open up. Let me open up a file. There we go. Pretty simple. It's in our sheet metal um, command manager. You can see sheet metal gusset is right here. Um, what we can do is you can pick faces. So I'm going to go ahead and pick uh, asking for two faces. It's one way. I can pick this face here and this face here. Um, I can also pick, um, you can see right here, it's going to pick a center. We can also pick, I'm going to go ahead and clear that one, and we can also pick a midpoint by right mouse clicking on there and I can hit a midpoint. You can see by the preview now that I've picked um, right in the center. I'm going to go ahead and leave my indent length to be 10 millimeters and my indent width, um, let's see, indent thickness, let me go to a 2.5 millimeter and just hit OK. So you can see what it does is it just adds a gusset in. Notice when you do flatten, 
um, that feature is not there. So it suppresses it for you. What you can also do is you can add sheet metal by not picking two faces, but just picking on a an edge. I'm going to go ahead here. I'm going to clear that selection again. I like. I'm going to have mine centered. And this one here, I can select a midpoint, and it'll add that in. If you wanted to uh, have your flat gusset instead of rounded. You can just pick on that. You can see here that it would be a flat gusset. You also can pick on your sides that you wanted drafted, um, or you can also have your inner or outer fillets. So if you don't want fillets to be added, you can just click them off and hit OK. And you'll see then it's just not going to add the fillets for you. You can add them in on your own. And if you decided you didn't want to, you can again edit them go back, I'll just leave, well, let me do a two mil, let me see if two millimeter will work. And hit okay. There we go. So what it does is it will add those in for you. Pretty slick. I think it's a pretty cool feature. Um, we've had um, we've had lofted bends before, but we haven't had bent lofted bends. So this is a new option for 2014. Um, so you can create a bent loft that will create physical bends rather than formed geometry and approximate these bend lines in a flat pattern. The bend bent lofted bends form is more of a realistic transition between two parallel profiles. Um, to facilitate instructions for like a press break um, manufacturing. So let me go ahead and open this up. So I have two profiles here. So once again, we have lofted bend. Before we had formed, and this is our new option called bend. So I'm going to go ahead and click on our two sketches. And you can see that we can have the number of bends. We can have cord tolerances. We have a few different faceting options for these corners. Um, you can also change how many facets that you want in that corner as well. Okay. Um, I'm also, you can also click on these little um, purple dots here and you can get the same options right here in your graphic area without having to go all the way over here to your um, the command manager or the property manager I should say so anyway either place um, you can you can fix those uh, options and then you can hit OK and you can also do a flatten and it'll take just a few seconds doing some calculating and you can see now that your flat pattern would show each of those points. If at any time you didn't want to use the, um, once you set it up, you cannot go back to the lofted bend and pick either or. You would have to redo it. You can't pick the bent or the formed, just so you're aware of that. Okay. Another neat feature. Um, something new. We've had rectangular corner reliefs and we've had circular and tear. New for 2014 is ob round and we also now have arc weld. I think the arc weld is really awesome now because you don't have to use a closed corner um, option. Um, this will give you a nice tight corner um, for when you create uh, welds. Swept flanges. Um, there's new options for slept, slept, swept flanges. Um, there is a cylindrical conical body option um, section of the property manager for swept flange. What it does is it lets you select a, a linear sketch edge that propagates to the flat pattern as a fixed entity. So with the swept flange tool, you can use a composite sketch contours that are swept along the circular path then when you select um, 
a linear sketch entity to propagate, the software can correctly flatten um, cylindrical or conical shapes, so it includes features like rolled ribs or flanges that may have been added as seams. Okay. Um, so you can see that the regular swept flange, um, it ends up having a uh, uh, flattened shape as like a rectangle with the swept flange option of cylindrical or conical bodies. Notice they selected that right edge and what it'll do is then it'll flatten it in a conical shape. So in a summary, um, what we've done today is I've gone through a little bit of convert to sheet metal. Um, showed you how we can uh, convert parts uh, and iGest files into sheet metal parts. Um, we've added, uh, we've created multi-body sheet metal parts with their own, uh, with its cut list. Each part is individual and they can also have their own sheet metal properties associated with them, either gauges. Um, it can also um, have its own separate um, flat patterns. And then we also explored a lot about uh, table formats and how you can customize your own and create your own tables. Uh, forming tools. We went through, we created one, see how they're used. Um, so if anyone does have any comments or questions, uh, I suggest that you go ahead and um, send it through on a chat and uh, I'll try to get to as many as we can today. Okay. So I wanna thank you all for coming and uh, please visit us at cati.com and I look forward to uh, to seeing you again. Thank you.